Cool. So appreciate you, C, for you know joining us for another episode of Community Voices. Uh, we just did Malcolm Brogdon of the Indiana Pacers. So you know it's a pleasure to have you up next. No problem. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Cool. Pre Sounds good. So how are you handling uh, retirement? Retirement has been good. Like find your time. It's been good. Retirement's been fun, man. I think, uh, I feel like I prepared myself for this. I feel like I was ready to be done. Um, you know, I have four um, older kids now, I guess. I have a 17-year-old, 15-year-old, a 12- and a 10-year-old. So, um, you know, they occupy all of my time now with dance and baseball and um, you know, school work and different activities. So it's been a lot of fun to kind of just integrate back into my family, be home, be on my own timeline. Um, you know, I played baseball for 19 years in the big leagues, but, you know, 21 years overall where I was just on that schedule. You know what I mean? Where, you know, all summer I'm working and, you know, no time off really to do anything and hang out with the family. So to be able to like have that time to relax now and um, be at peace with my career, you know, and not have, I have, I have no desire to go back and have any competition, like play any competition. Like I don't wish I was playing. I don't miss anything. Like I still talk to all my guys. So um, I'm in a good spot and I feel good about uh, what's next to come in my life. Nice. I thought you were going to say something along the lines of you organizing your sneaker closet. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to take me a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> that way, because I know people know you as like the PE goat when it comes to baseball. So, speaking your relationship with Jordan Brand and in particular the Jordan Twelve. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I started. I got on Jordan in the end of two thousand and seven. Mm -hmm. um, but I had been begging uh, age and everybody. Um, I was trying to get out of my Nike contract. The whole first seven years, I was in the big leagues. Yeah. Um, to try to get to Jordan. I hear that too much. People trying to get out of the Nike contract. I was trying to get out of my Nike deal <laughs> <laughs> to get to Jordan. Um, that was like a goal of mine. Obviously, growing up in the hood, I grew up in Vallejo. I grew up in the Bay Area mm -hmm. in California. Um, and I could never afford Jordans, you know. And, and I'm, I'm a huge Jordan fan and a huge fan of the shoes. And the 11 is my favorite shoe. Yeah. Um, came out when I was a sophomore in high school. And I just remember wanting, wanting it so bad. And... Uh, you know, wanting to be a part of the brand and, and actually having a chance to, you know, fulfill that dream in the 2007. It's been great, man. The boxes come, you know, they a, a package came in a couple of days ago and I'm, I'm still like a 12 year old kid. I still get excited to get Jordans and, um, you know, I don't throw anything away. Like <laughs> I keep them all and it's still all fresh and brand new to me. So, um, you know, I'm really blessed and, and fortunate to be a part of the brand and, you know, the brand has been great to me and, and, uh, you know, you know, like you said, being able to wear like retro PEs, you know, on the field, um, you right. know, 2009, being able to have those those Concord zone down the stretch for our World mm -hmm. Series run. Um, I mean, those those are epic pictures for me that I'll always be able to cherish and remember and have my favorite shoe on down the stretch, you know, winning the World Series. Yeah, not everybody, you know, is with Jordan Brand and have those kind of PEs too. Because even like I can imagine players like, oh, I wish I could just play like in Jordan 1s or something. But you literally had those in the feet just for you, so. Yeah, now nah, for, for sure. People, and I mean, you see it now where guys are out there swapping out soles, throw, slapping cleats on the bottom of ones and stuff. Mm -hmm. And to actually have, be a part of the brand and have them make me shoes, like I said, it's just a dream come true and a blessing for me, for sure. Nice. And then as you talk about, you know, baseball on opening day, you're seeing a lot of baseball teams kind of following suit with uh, the NBA and NFL when it comes to, like, kneeling during like the national anthem and things like that so what are your thoughts on like the MLB just giving the freedom to the players to express how they feel I am excited about it um and I I think um you know Mookie Betts is one of my like he's like a little brother to me mm -hmm. and I think uh you know watching him do what he did after signing that monster contract and then going out the very next night and taking the knee during the national anthem I think that just you know, open up the door for the rest of the league and the rest of the guys. Um, you know, baseball is a different sport than, than the other sports. You know, it's 65% white. Um, you know, it was only 68, 68, 68 black players at on opening day last year. Wow. I mean, that's, you know, it's just, that's a, it's a crazy stat. Like, so, you know, we're outnumbered. You know, there's some teams that don't even have a black player on the team. So to see Mookie step up and, and take a knee like that and let, the rest of the guys step up and, and be able to take a knee and express themselves. 
Um, it was an amazing thing. And, I, and, I, and honestly, I, I want to give all the credit to Mook, and I, and I feel like it started with him. Yeah. 68 is crazy number. 68. It's, it's insane. Like, I even like the percentage, like 68 people straight up. 68 people straight up. And to think about, like, me, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s, there were black players all over the field that I can look to. And is the reason why I wanted to step on the mound was because of Dave Stewart. The reason why, you know, I wanted to play the outfield was because of Ricky Henderson. It was Dave Parker. You know what I mean? It was all these different players just on my favorite team, the A's, that, that you can pick and choose from, the, you know, to, to look up to. And, you know, today only having 68 players in the, the league as a whole right. makes it hard for kids to identify with being a baseball player where they don't see anybody that looks like them out there on the field. Exactly. And that's a good segue into what you've been doing with uh, pitching. So tell me how that came into fruition and the work you've been doing in the city as far as, like, bringing uh, baseball closer to the kids and, and like, New York, for example, or even like LA. Yeah, pitch in started um, again, 2000, or 2008 pitch in started mm -hmm. um, with me, myself, my mom, and my wife. And it really started with me wanting to, um, uh, I guess, remake the, the Little League field that I grew up on. I yeah. wanted to redo it and, and, you know, put some money into it, cut the grass nice, you know, new fences, and, and just kind of give it a, a facelift. And, you know, I, I ended up giving some money to somebody that I thought was going to do that job, didn't get done. And I came back the next year and was like, man, the field still looks the same. So we ended up just starting, we, we ended up starting our foundation just on that, like just wanting to renovate fields and get kids back playing baseball in the inner cities. And it's just kind of taken off from there. And now we, you know, we renovate fields on both coasts, you know, in the Bronx, back home in California, we've done stuff in Milwaukee and Cleveland. Um, and now with, uh, the Players Alliance for me with everything that's happened um, in the last couple, six, eight months, um, the pre pre police brutality and all of that stuff, yeah. you know, the, the stuff that we alluded to earlier, talking about, you know, the guys taking a knee and stuff. Um, before the season started, uh, all the black players and a lot of the minor league former and current guys got together. We made this video mm -hmm. um, and we, we released the video. It's been playing a lot. And, you know, out of that video, we, we formed this group called the Players Alliance. Um, and, and we plan on, you know, making baseball, giving baseball facelift top to bottom, you know, uh, grassroots, getting kids black playing, um, you know, at the top levels, getting more GMs, coaches, scouts, um, and, and just really uh, making a change. And, and, you know, I think if you look at the history of kind of Major League Baseball and the history of this country, it goes hand in hand with the systemic racism. It's the same. So yeah. uh, we're here to try to make a change. And try to get these kids back playing. And that's the mission of the Players Alliance. That's the mission to pitch in. And, um, you know, I'm here to do all that work now. I got, I got plenty of time. And, plenty of time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a 17-year-old. He's been out on the circuit now with travel ball and everything. So I'm getting a chance to see a lot of these kids. And, you know, it's something I'm really passionate about is, is, is getting these guys not just back playing, but back to the big leagues. Right. And it's crazy because when you mentioned, like, 68 people, uh, 68 black players just in total, and the work you're doing as far as like bringing baseball back into the in the city, which consists of you know black and brown kids, you know it's it's incredible really. Just because I remember growing up, and in the Bronx, never really seen like a baseball field playing. And if there was one, it wasn't really up to par. Like you know, be spotty grass, you know, no real mound and things like that. So salute to you on all that work you've been doing. Thank you, I appreciate it. We got a park actually going up in the Bronx right now at Quarry Park. Mm -hmm. That should be done. Uh, it's by next baseball season. Yeah. It'll definitely be done. I'm, I'm super excited about that. And like you said, I want kids to see a brand new field and be like, hey, let me go take some ground balls or let me get into baseball. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they see nice they see nice things and they want to be a part of it. So it's up to us, you know, it's up to my generation of players now to recognize that and feed these kids, you know, um, some baseball and, and get them off the basketball court and get them off the football field and, you know, get them back into playing baseball. Yeah, gather their friends and, you know, play a game, especially yeah. brand new field, so. So with that said, you know, love the work that you're doing. I spoke to Samir, shout out to him. I thought it was a great idea to have you. So if you want to donate to the Pitching Foundation, it's probably my favorite part of these interviews when I <laughs> pull out the checkbook, you know, and so you can see that. Oh, so that's amazing. I was into the Pitching Foundation, you know, um, shout out to your wife as well, who's been handling like all the paperwork and things like that. So it all get processed uh, through the weekend, but I definitely wanted to show love and, you know, let you know the work you're doing is, you know, doesn't go unnoticed. And 
it's very appreciated. So. No, we appreciate that 1000%. And like, you know, without, you know, programs like yours and you, the stuff that you're doing, we can't keep going on. So, you know, me right. being a retired player now, um, we, we lean on programs like yours and, you know, different programs to keep us going. So um, we definitely appreciate it. And that money will be, be put to good use for sure. Yeah, especially with sport being so important, like our culture. So seeing the work that you're doing when it comes to renovating and make sure the kids have a place, to, a safe place to play and something that's new so they're not like tripping over, you know, rocks in the field and things like that. So, yeah, shout out to you and pitching. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Hopefully I can just keep going keep doing more things and you know my next goal is to you know I want to I want to take over the travel baseball scene mm -hmm. I want to you know I want to put together teams and you know I want each guy to have their own you know kind of baseball facility and we have kids running through there and and you know we just put together kind of our own free league and you know I think uh you know how conscious and you know how in the front of every everything that is in everybody's mind right now um I think we got a good chance to to really turn this around and and do some good things here in the, in the near future. Yeah, for sure. Let us know how we can help. We don't carry too much baseball product, but I'm sure you'll nobody find does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll find like some kits there, something like that, or even just you know regular what is like Jordan fleece or something, or even Nike stuff so for the kids to wear. So yeah, we'll definitely connect on that when the time comes. I appreciate it for sure. Cool, but um, that's about it. So I appreciate you taking the time out. Um,